Hello, boys and girls. Welcome back to my world of stuff. I'm off to the cinema. It's Wednesday morning. Twisters is out today. It's been a busy few days, as I mentioned in my last video. That's why I've not posted a lot lately, but there's more stuff to come. The retro movie review coming in the next day or so, and some other bits and pieces. And nice little surprises. Yeah, it's been busy. Uh, so, I've just about finished all my commitments, so I can devote myself more fully to the channel and get enough subscriber numbers up. So, if you are new here, if you've joined this video because you want to see somebody talk about Twisters, why not like and subscribe? Even if you didn't like it, you could just press the subscribe button, go off to watch the videos, leave a comment down below. Right, I'm off to the cinema, I'm going to grab a bit of brekkie on the way. I'll see you after Twisters! Right, I've arrived at my destination, View Cinema. I had my breakfast, I popped into Greg's, got myself a bacon and omelette roll, and a cup of tea, £2.85, what a bargain, what a way to start the day. Right, cinema time, let's go. And welcome back. Well, as you can probably see from the edge of the screen here, summer has arrived, the sun is streaming in. It's very warm. It's here at last. It's here. So let's make the most of the next couple of hours because summer 24 has arrived, but I don't think it's going to stay around for long. Right, let's talk about Twisters. I am a bit of a fan of disaster movies. I always was. I'm old enough to remember that first tranche of disaster films in the 70s. It was that sort of one, two, three punch of uh, Poseidon Adventure... Towering Inferno, and then we had Earthquake in 1974. And I remember going to the cinema and really enjoying these films. What I like about those films and those early disaster films is they were about ordinary people who were pitched into terrible situations. That's something I, I sort of lean towards anyway in sort of genre or science fiction stuff. Not so much the outer space stuff, the Star Treks and so on. But real people, recognisable people who have to deal with something beyond their imagination. And that's what some of these early disaster films did. These massive towering inferno, the boat that turns upside down, the earthquake that demolishes half of Los Angeles. And then they had a bit of a renaissance in the 90s when we had films like Volcano, Dante's Peak, Armageddon. All these films that came along obviously with more sophisticated technology and more special effects, but the best ones were always the ones about the people. And of course, we've had more recent ones like 2012 and The Day After Tomorrow, and they've all become bigger and bolder and a bit dafter when it comes to things like Moonfall. But at their core, their story is about people in trouble. That's the problem I had with the original Twister. I have revisited, not recently, but certainly within the last decade or so. The film seemed to me about people who put themselves in danger. They're chasing storms. Now, I know... From my memory of the first film, they were doing it because they wanted to research storms and see if there was any way of finding out what caused them and if there was any way of lessening their power. So they caused less devastation and destruction. But I just felt, yeah, you people are really stupid. You're driving into these things. And there was an element of thrill-seeking and living on the edge of being dangerous that made the film less effective for me because what any normal person would do in that situation, particularly when it gets out of control, is just turn around and get the hell out of there. But they plunge deeper into it. So the drama and the peril was created by the characters rather than being visited upon them. And that was something I feared might happen with Twisters, which has just been released in cinemas, which I've seen, as you know. But it doesn't, because it actually puts a slightly more interesting spin on it, because 
the storm chasers in this aren't just chasing storms for the kicks and thrills. They're doing it because they want to see if they can tame tornadoes, because they cause so much destruction and devastation. And to be fair to Twisters, it does show us some of that. There's a couple of quite striking scenes of the devastation caused by these towns that are wiped out. People have lost everything. And you sort of realise, because of course we live in an environment where we don't get this sort of weather condition, you do realise that the destruction and devastation these things cause, especially around this area, it's all set around Oklahoma, where they do suffer with these tornado seasons. So I felt that this film took that sort of you stupid irresponsible idiot sting out of the film because these people were doing what they were doing for a reason. Certainly one group of them are. Because they want to learn more about the constitution of tornadoes and find a way to weaken their power, to weaken them and make them less dangerous. The film is directed by Lee Isaac Chung from a screenplay by Mark L. Smith. Although it isn't really a sequel to Twister, it does share the same logo. So it's obviously selling itself on that first film. But it's not a sequel in that there are no returning characters. It's a totally different set of people, totally different set of circumstances. I understand that there are some callbacks to the original film, but I don't know it well enough to be able to pinpoint that, apart from the fact that the device that they use to explore the... Tornadoes is called Dorothy, as it was, I think, in the original film. Story starts then five years ago when a group of students, led by Daisy Edgar Jones, who is excellent, playing Kate Cooper. She's one of a bunch of students. She's trying to get a grant to explore the effects and the causes of tornadoes in the hope of, at some point in the future, being able to contribute towards lessening their power. So they're not quite so devastating to the community. There are five of them. There's her the boyfriend, a couple of um, three friends, and they go out into the storm, but things go horribly wrong where they misjudge the power of the storm. They think it's a certain level. It's actually a much stronger storm. There is a tragedy. I won't go into what the tragedy is, but five years later, Kate has stepped out of the field. She's now working in a meteorological office in New York. But one of her friends, Javi, played by Anthony Ramos, he visits her and persuades her to get involved again because he's now part of the military. The military have come up with a new piece of hardware to investigate tornadoes and he wants her to be part of this because they think they're very close to finding out a way to control the power of these things they're road testing them effectively she's persuaded to go out and become part of this expedition we do meet a bunch of showboating uh, tornado chasers they're a bunch of youtubers led by tyler owens played by glenn powell glenn powell is becoming i think a big star, and I think he's going to be part of the next generation of big Hollywood stars. We've seen him in things like uh, Top Gun Maverick last year. He was a big hit in that romantic comedy, Anyone But You, which came out last year, which was a massive hit. He is one of those faces. He's got that sort of chiseled Hollywood look. I think he's going to be a very big star. Anyway, he plays Tyler. He's this gung-ho, reckless tornado chaser, and he's there for the kicks and get his YouTube channel hits and likes and so on. We all know about that, don't we? So these two groups are sort of competing against each other. The military and Kate and Tyler and his crazy bunch. And of course, there's a cliche British character called Ben. He's a London journalist who's profiling Tyler. He's played by Harry Haddon Patton or Peyton. And he's got all the cliches that you get in American films about British people. He's uptight, he's nervous, he's jittery. He doesn't want to make a mess of his trousers. He's very straight laced and very, you know, that very cliched, boringly cliched American depiction of the English. It's quite amusing. Anyway, they go off their separate ways and they get involved in lots of tornado action. Tornado strike, there's lots of devastation. There's a city destroyed, or a town destroyed. Kate discovers there's some sort of corruption going on by a local businessman who ostensibly appears to be helping out people who've been struck by tornadoes. But really, he wants to buy up the land and sort of feather his own nest. And she's in conflict with Tyler because she doesn't agree with his methods and why he's doing things. Eventually, they start to understand and respect one another and they both realise why they do what they do and they sort of help each other as the story moves along. What I like is there's no clichéd romance here. There, there's an attraction between the two, but they don't end up in a big romantic close-up snog. There's none of that sort of thing. It's very much about her. She's very... She's quite... I won't say she's buttoned up but she's been hurt by what happened five years previously she hasn't really got over that she's very wary of getting involved with people she's certainly wary of getting involved with tornado chasing for whatever reason but she thaws across the film and forms an interesting potential future partnership with tyler 
I enjoyed this film. I really enjoyed this film. What I liked about it most of all is it felt so old fashioned. It, this is a film that could have been made two years after the original Twister. It doesn't feel like a modern film because of two main things. It's very family friendly. There's no real hardcore swearing. There's no effing and jeffing, which is de rigueur in most films these days. It just feels like an old fashioned action adventure film. The characters are good people, by and large. Even, even Tyler's a bit of a knob, but he's a nice bloke, and he sort of turns in and understands why she's doing what she's doing. Supporting characters are all decent people. There's no baddies as such, apart from the businessman who's, you know, as I say, trying to scoop up all the land. But it's, just, it's a feel-good film. There are some great action set pieces. You really feel the power and rage of these tornadoes. I think more than you did in Twister. It, 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 it's sort of cosmic almost, the way these things spin and just, just randomly destroy and kill. You see a lot, quite a few scenes of people being sucked up by these things and disappearing into the vortex. I've often wondered in those situations, what happens to these people? What happens to their bodies? Are they, are they found miles away, later on mangled and torn apart? As the film doesn't go into that, but it's something my morbid mind thinks about when I see things, see things like that. But this is a really feel-good film. And as I say, what I liked about it, it does have a very 80s, 90s feel about it. It is timeless in a way. And I really appreciate that in a time when films are so cynical and seem to think they've got to be gritty and edgy and, and slightly aggressive. This is a nice piece of old school action adventure entertainment. And I really enjoyed it. It's really good fun. I think it's a bit too long. It's just over two hours. It could have shaved off 10 minutes, maybe. But it was never boring because there's so much going on. And, and what I like about it is... I think the problem, as I said in Twister, I didn't really in, wasn't interested in the characters particularly because I felt they were stupid. But in this, you do understand the motivations of people. You understand why they're doing what they're doing and you're invested in them and you like them. The performance is so good. Daisy Edgar Jones is such a natural performer. And the script has lots of little naturalistic moments which make a difference. Little things that happen that people do that make you realise that these are supposed to be real people. And I think it works very well. So all in all, a very interesting and enjoyable, surprising film because not having much enjoyed Twister, I thought this was going to be more of the same, but it really wasn't. It had a lot more to it and it had a lot more heart, had a lot more soul and it was genuinely enjoyable and very spectacular. So thumbs up to Twisters in cinemas. Now I'm going to give Twisters 8 out of 10. I'm going to give it 8 out of 10 because I think it deserves 8 out of 10. And I'm just giving it one to there. So if you watch Twisters, uh, let me know what you thought of it. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you thought of Twisters. Were you blown away by it? <laughs> or not? Don't forget to like and subscribe. That's vitally important. Thank you do that. Please subscribe. Press that button there. Subscribe. Like, thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Lots more to come. There's a retro movie review to come tomorrow. Retro stuff coming next week. I've got lots of things that I am planning to do over the summer, such as it is. So stick around. I'll see you soon until I do. Keep taking the stuff.